Hey, brothers and sisters. Um, I'm out of work today because well, we're getting ice, snow, uh, ice and uh, snow out here, and it's freezing rain. But anyway, I hope you all are driving safe. And may the Lord protect you. Glory be to the Lord always. And may the blood of Jesus Christ cover everybody. This video, all of you. Um, me, everybody. Anyway, my son, my 17 year old son was out of school today because of the weather. But anyway, he had a dream. And um, I'm going to tell you what the dream means. And then he's going to explain it to you. Um, he saw a, a clock. A, it looked like a giant father clock. And the hour hand was at 12, and the second hand was just about a second before 12 midnight, which represents that we are in the final hour, we are in the end times, and then there was a giant moon behind it. The giant moon represents the midnight hour approaching. It also represents the counterfeit bride Ishtar, which is um, an idol, the queen of, they call, they call her what, the queen of heaven? In Roman Catholicism. In Roman Catholicism, they call her the queen of heaven, that is idolatry. Um, it is the, the, the counterfeit bride, if you will, of counterfeit bride of Christ. Um, you know, it basically represents Satanism. So that, that moon represents that, and also it represents the midnight hour that we are in, because this is the end times. On the second side, he said of the dream, he saw a giant sun, like it was daybreak, a, a dawn. It means the dawning of a new era. The, the tower represents, um, it was a tower, just one tower. Rep it I don't know if you've ever seen Genesis. In the book of Genesis, it talks about uh, a tower of Babel being built by Nimrod. Nimrod was a king that was blessed and glorified by God, but he rebelled against God and wanted his subjects and the uh, re residents of his city to worship him. So he had in mind to build one tower that represented one government, one religion, basically one currency, and he wanted to conquer. So, like, um, like it says in uh, the book of Revelations, I'm paraphrasing, the, 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 the other beast stood, he was on the white horse with the bow and arrow, with the power of, the, with the power of conquering, giving to conquer, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, anyways, Nimrod was blessed by God, and he rebelled against God, and he wanted one world government, pretty much, one world, uh, one world government, one world religion, one world currency, and I'm paraphrasing here, you guys, okay, so that, that's the, the, the story about the Tower of Babel is in the book of Genesis, you can look that up on your own, look at Revelations about the beast uh, pertaining to the Antichrist, the white horse, and also, um, this particular dream my son had, um, he saw that tower in front of a, a sun in the back, and it looked like daybreak, meaning that that's going to be the beginning of the New World Order. And the sun was big. The sun represents the light bearer also, which is Satan, the father of lies, Baal, Baal, sorry, I keep mispronouncing his name, Baphomet, you know, so many names that Satan goes by. When the New World Order is ushered in, the seven-year covenant, which is in Daniel 9.27, has to be confirmed, meaning that Israel, and yes, I understand that Daniel 9.27 doesn't say peace agreement. I get it, before you guys jump on me about that. Daniel 9.27 talks about a nation, which is Israel, doesn't mention Israel, but it is Israel, signing an uh, agreement with many nations. And once that agreement is um, signed, that peace treaty is signed, it's in place, once it's signed, the minute it's confirmed, you know, signed. Um, and again, I know that 927 doesn't say signed, okay? You know, so let's stay away from that. I'm not going to debate that. I'm just saying, once the, confirmed, when the covenant is confirmed, it's in place, it's signed. Israel has a peace treaty in place. There are two-state solution, and Palestine's a two-state solution. Then the tribulation starts, okay? In that interim, a great catastrophe has to happen, whether it be a great war a great earthquake, a great disaster with a, a, a like wormwood, it has to happen, okay? And there's going to be a lot of famine, a lot of pestilence, a lot of disease, right? Mm -hmm. Hence the horsemen, horsemen of pestilence and famine. There's going to be millions of lives lost. Many lives will be lost. One third of the exact. Yeah, like one third of, or one third, I believe it says the about of, in the scriptures of the whole world. So um, the Antichrist spirit will have full power, which means you'll be fully possessed by Satan, he will um, appear at the temple, the holy temple in Israel, 
abomination of desolation. He will declare himself God, show signs and wonders. People will think that he's this great Messiah that has been foretold centuries ago. Then that will be the great spirit of deception. Then there will be a great falling away. So those of you that said that the great falling away has happened, no, it has not happened. That is false doctrine. Okay? It hasn't happened yet. It's leading to that point. The falling away is supposed to happen in one shot. Great falling away. Like, majority of the world will worship this fake Messiah, the beast, as a god. Okay? And then he's going to declare a false peace. And then that's going to, that means that's going to mark the mark, that's going to mark the era when the New World Order and when the mark of the beast, you know, it's going to be implemented and the beast is going to reign. The New World Order, the Great Falling Away, when the, and then when the Antichrist is revealed. This is in Thessalonians, book, I believe the second book. And um, also, this, um, these things have to happen before the terrible great day, before the, the dreadful and great day day of the coming of the Lord. I don't know when that's going to be. And I'm not setting any dates. The Lord has everything in control. The bottom line is my son had this dream and he was warned. And this is a warning that has to be sent to you all. And I believe that this dream was from the Lord. I'm not stating it as fact. But he went, he went to bed with your head clear, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that dream is very clear that it represents that. The other scripture that talks about the, that talks about the end times is when Jesus Christ's disciples asked him what was going to be the signs of his coming. He mentioned you know, there was going to be calamities, perplexities, and I'm paraphrasing again. Wars, rumors of wars, nations rising against nation, earthquakes in diverse places. But it's not, don't fret, because it's, the, it's not, the, don't fret, because these must come to pass, and, the, and it's not the end yet. For the abomination of desolation must reveal himself at the holy place to be God. Um, there will be, of course, a seven-year covenant, and again, I'm paraphrasing. But he has to reveal himself, there will be a great fall away, there's going to be a great catastrophe. And um, I think that parable is in Matthew and Luke, mm -hmm. I believe, right? Yeah. You can look that up, too. My son is going share to share to you what scriptures he found that also confirms that. Does that cover the dream? Yeah. I know I pretty much told him. I'm sorry. I was just surprised that he told me that. So that's a warning. If you guys aren't right with God, please get right with God. And don't forget what he said for us on the cross. Preach the gospel. Stay. Don't stay focused on the rapture. Get excited about the rapture. You need to preach the gospel and let the, let, let the peoples know what the Lord did for us on the cross is we got to focus on winning souls, loving one another, comforting one another, and stay pleasing to God and living holy, a bride, meaning uh, we can't assume that we're a bride yet. The Lord makes that decision. But I can tell you that one of the qualities of being a bride is being willing to die for God, point blank. Tell them what scriptures you found that in, sweetheart. Lamentations chapter 2, verses 7 through 10. That's another confirmation in scripture. And Zechariah 8, verses 19 through 23. That's another confirmation. So, I believe this dream was from the Lord, and it's a firm warning. I mean, guys, look around you. The signs are there. The seven-year covenant is in negotiations right now. Okay? The spirit of deception is growing stronger. Do not trust anyone, me, no one. You take this to the Lord in prayer. Okay? Because there's a prideful spirit out there. And just to, just, just to comment on an email that I got... I went in depth with this person, but prideful spirit is like a Jezebel spirit. They think they know everything. They will. They refuse to listen to sound doctrine. They think that they're right. They claim to get confirmations from God, which are false. They refuse to take your 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 information to the Lord in prayer. They refuse that. Okay. They think they know it all. They think that they're right, and they they will not. They say the right things to you. And although they'll tell you, oh, discern them with the Lord, discern with the Spirit, this, that, and the other, they will mix that in with lies, telling you that the Lord confirmed it to them so that way you wouldn't have to take it to the Lord in prayer. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's, just, that's, that's, the, that's the prideful spirit. There's many prideful spirits. The other thing I wanted to tell you all is that a prideful spirit would never ask the Lord if I'm not ready for the rapture, if I'm not selected, help me to become a tribulation saint. I say that in my prayers every night because I believe we should be prepared for the possibility that some of us might be left behind and we will have to die for God. Or we have to face the tribulation and we will have to die for God. Okay? I also ask the Lord, is there anything that I need to work on? Any areas? Anything to become a better servant for Him? I also ask the Lord, um, what can I do for Him? Okay? Um... I also, a prideful spirit will also tell you 
that they get dreams, visions, and, and words from the Lord, and they state it as fact. And I'm going to come out and say it. I'm going to be bold. Okay? In my videos, you hear me say, I believe, or I got a word or vision from the Lord, or I'm not going to state it as fact, because I could be in error. I could be wrong. Okay? Or um, the prideful spirit, I mean, a person might, or, or I also say it's my belief that I got this word or vision from the Lord, or this is my observation. A prideful spirit would never say that. Now, I always say, um, oh, in case I'm in error, this is my observation or my belief that I got this, this, this from the Lord. Prideful spirit will never say that. They will state it as fact. Prideful spirit will also imply prophecy, will also give themselves the title of prophet, apostle, or what have you. Okay? You want to be careful with that because, as I said in my prior videos, the, the, the great prophets in the Bible never, ever proclaim to be prophets. They always humble themselves. With that being said, ladies... And gentlemen, test this with the Lord and take it in prayer. Okay, please. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day.